Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and possibly the dirtiest radio I've ever seen. Now I got this from eBay but I didn't actually order this radio. I actually ordered another radio and I got sent this one so I think the seller actually mixed it up but it was cheap enough so I didn't bother plus it was an audio line and I thought yeah this is going to be a challenge. So straight away you can see the needle stuck, which is kind of common. So let's have a look inside, see if there's any surprises. And sure enough, it's as dirty inside as it is outside. So that's going to have to have a good clean. Some nice blobs of dust. But the circuit board looks okay. So no nasty surprises around there. A few eagle eye people out there, you might notice a couple of extra wires there, which I didn't spot. And we'll take the take the component side off a couple of loose wires hanging about but apart from that it looks okay and it looks like somebody's piggybacked a PLL onto there so I think this is a mid-band conversion kind of looks right because there's a wire going off to the switch on the front and a wire going off to the board underneath so the meat is absolutely jam solid But apart from that, it seems to be complete. So we stand a good chance of getting this working. So let's start by getting these filthy knobs off. Yet again, more filth. And even more. There, doesn't that look absolutely yummy? How? Can you get this so dirty? So let's get the front off. So I took this outside and give it a blast with compressed air. Got rid of all the dust out of it. So we'll take this metal bracket out that holds the meter in place. And as you can see, even by just wiggling it around, the colour of the foam cleaner is starting to turn a different colour. Now I'll give this a damn good soaking foam cleaner and as you can see it's come up nicely. 
some of the decal on the front is worn down a bit. So our friend foam cleaner gets rid of all this whatever it was gets rid of it quite nicely I actually went and ran this under a tap after this as you can see the colour of the foam cleaner is absolutely yummy So we'll work all the knobs and buttons in a nice foam cleaner bath. And there, as you can see, it's come up quite nicely. Some wear and tear on the front, but considering the state it was in. So the cases don't look too bad, just need a real good clean. I think this radio is going to be quite nice when it's finished. We'll clean the front uh, display glass or plastic, whatever it is. It's actually quite scratched, but it's not that bad considering. And the lens for the channel display. A bit of alcohol to get rid of the remains of a bit of glue on it. And there, ends up nice and clean. So we'll put that to one side and carry on with the insides of the radio. So first things first is we need to look at this meter. Now it looks like somebody's replaced the bulb in there as the bulb got too hot and distorted the inside of the actual coil housing for the meter. But anyway, we're going to get rid of that bulb, replace it with something that produces a lot less heat. So we need to try and get this meter movement working correctly. So we'll carefully disassemble the meter removing the tape that's lost all its sticky Still held on somewhere. There, comes off. So as you can see, the meter is still moving, but it's lost all its its springiness to return back to zero. So I'll just put a little tiny bit of lubricant on it. That made absolutely no difference. So 
so I need to start slackening these screws off. See, it's still well stuck. But we do actually manage to get it freed off a little bit. So, I think we've got that freed off. We'll have to see how it goes. Seems to be moving freely now. Now I know that these meters are notorious for sticking. And this is actually going to come back and bite us in the backside later on. As you can see, it's still not completely right. So I'll have to see how it goes when we put it back in the radio, I think. Now, if I'd have only loosened the top screw a little bit, I might not have had all this trouble. But it seems to be moving for now. So let's do something with this bulb. There's no doubt this has been running way too hot. So it's just been connected by wrapping insulation tape around the wires. So we're going to remove these wires totally and replace them. Actually finding a way to prop the front up so I can actually desolder it. And there's our wires gone. So let's fit a cob LED into this. So I've already made a hole in the side of the meter for it to go through. Just need a couple of dots of glue and that should hold it into place. So we'll attach a couple of wires. We also need to change the current limiting resistor as well. So this isn't too bright. So 
So we attach it onto a power supply just to check. And there we have a nice, a nice glow. So I think that should be good. Again, this meter starts sticking again. It does actually look brighter on camera than it is in real life. So there, secured into place. I'm still not happy with this meter. So the current limiting resistor is on the front circuit board. So first, just remove any excess solder and then unsolder the current limiting resistor. It's just that one there. And we'll replace it. I think I used 560 ohm for this. So we're not driving the LED at full brightness. We're just getting it to illuminate so it's a nice glow because these LEDs will go very very bright so we'll put our nice clean front switches back on And we'll start to reassemble the front of the radio. I'll start with the bracket that retains the meter in place. And there's the front of our radio in position. Reconnect up the wires for the actual signal meter itself. Again, these are soldered to the front PCB. So we'll solder those in place. And we'll reconnect the wires for the LED that we've put in to the signal meter. start putting our front control knobs on.
Now I've not forgotten to put the metal inside them so it holds them into place. So pushing these into position whilst holding the back of the circuit board. There, this radio looks better already. And we seem to have an issue with the channel digits as well. Now this actually turned out to be the actual channel change itself. It was actually dirty. Which I didn't actually film but I did strip down and clean out and got all these segments working again perfectly. As you can see they're flickering all over the show. Actually very simple to clean it. Just have to take the plate off the back of the channel change and then start taking the actual wafers with the connectors on. So the radio does seem to be somewhat working. And as you can see, the meter has got stuck yet again. Yep, it's definitely sticking yet again. But the radio is receiving. This is actually transmitting. But again, that meter is becoming troublesome. You can see it's just not moving right. Now we have actually got a problem with the RF gain as well. And that turned out to be one of the IF coils that was faulty. See the meter does work but it's just not right. And when you turn the RF game back, you get this horrible noise. Like I say, this was one of the IF coils that was at fault. And we'll see whether it's on frequency. And yeah, it seems to work okay-ish on mid-band, but there was a VCO problem. Which needed some looking at as well. I think whoever converted this hadn't finished the conversion. The um, VCO needed broadbanding just a little bit.
So after a little bit of fiddling around, we managed to get some sense out of this. There's a capacitor down by the side there that we changed. So again, I've done a little bit of alignment. Managed to get this radio working across all the 80 channels. We still got this RF game problem. Now I didn't actually fix the RF game problem till later on. So, a little bit of adhesive finishes off our front. Doesn't look too bad at all now. So apart from the worn off lettering on the front, I think we've managed to get this radio into somewhat of a working condition. Now to your eagle-eyed people, uh, the meter still isn't right. And I didn't film this, but I actually replaced the meter with one out of a Eurosonic. Which just needed a little bit of modification to get it to fit, but that worked. As you can see, the meter still just isn't right there. So that's how I left the radio for a little while. Whilst I got some more parts for it. Say so I got a donor radio for the IF coil, got a donor radio for the signal meter. I didn't have any footage of its final state, but I did manage to get some pictures. So that's how it ended up with a different type of mid-band board fitted to it which is just one of my experimental boards which made the piggyback a bit neater. And we actually did a little bit more work on the VCO and we managed to get it to be happy across all the 80 channels and we got it to receive and transmit perfectly across the 80 channels. 
wired it up to the front switch correctly which was actually dirty that needed cleaning as well so as you can see bang on frequency and bang on frequency on midband and if you might have noticed we've had a decal made as well which has restored the front of the radio to a better condition which makes it look a lot better so here's the radio as it finished the new decal replacement meter midband sorted out coil in the IF sorted out dirty switches dirty controls VCO needed broadbanding alignment on the transmit and receive and a really 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 good clean so I think that's transformed this radio from what was possibly the dirtiest radio I've ever seen into something that somebody can use but anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode